All right, guys, so welcome to module one. I'm just quickly going to jump into the difference between video analysis and data analysis, just so that we all on board that there is a bit of a difference. Now, video analysis kind of started it all in a sense in professional sport. Obviously, data analysis has been around forever because it's part, it's like a, a foundation part of what science is. You know, you uh, measure stuff and you work out formulas and you and you get statistics and data on that. But video analysis came in around the 1990s and professional teams started really recording themselves um, to zoom in on their performance. And then later we would see um, software analysis companies come about that could tag certain events out of that video analysis or out of the video um, footage and then create data analysis over time. But the two things are essentially not the same. And if you're the coach of a schools team or a club team, then um, video analysis is something you can invest in. It's expensive. It takes a bit more time. Obviously, it has its advantages, but we'll discuss in a minute. Um, but data analysis, which is what this course is about, is really what you should be looking at as a key development tool. So if I'm going to look over here, I'm just going to discuss video analysis quickly. Obviously, it's a bit more visual. Um, I finally found that with school teams, the guys care more about what their hair looks like or, or how they present on the screen. So it's quite difficult if you're very strategic and as a coach, you know, you want to hammer down a few concepts and all they're looking at is their hairstyles. But anyway, for professional teams, it really works. It's a visual way of illustrating what can be better. It has a short-term focus because it mostly only narrows down and it's only really valid contextually when two specific teams are playing. So if you're going to play the same opponent in the semi-finals, this is the way to go. The short-term focus, it is only that game. It's opponent-centered. Um, you can obviously get a lot about how you play. A lot of coaches I know, which is, might not be a good thing, they um, they use video analysis sessions as you know the, the time to scream at players for what they did wrong, as if the players could change it um, on the screen. Um, but it could be opponent centered. It's a lot more value if you look and you really analyze opponents, see what they do with line outs. Is there little pieces of body language that give away <clears throat> certain things? Um, I remember years ago attending a session with, with Jake White. Um, he was the analyst for the Springboks under Nick Mallet at that stage. And um, they clearly showed how the All Blacks target Russi Erasmus, who, funnily enough, is the coach of the Springboks today. Um, from kickoffs, and the simple reason was they picked up on video that every time he catches the ball, he steps off his right foot into contact. So he never passed and he never kicked, and that was something they could control. So even though Rassi was not shaky or, or in any way dodgy under the high ball, they could just control what he's going to do because he was predictable in that sense. So from that point of view, video analysis is quite fascinating. The investment is quite a, quite quite big for video analysis. A lot of teams do it at schools level, but their footage is so crappy that you can't really tag a lot from it. And in that sense, data analysis would be a lot more accurate. So let's quickly just look then at data analysis. It is obviously more analytical. You can count and measure anything you like um, using this method. It's a bit more long-term focus. Um, you want to spot some trends over time in your team. Um, on very specific things, then data analysis is going to be the one you want to be looking at and invest more time in. It's lightweight. I still, to this day, use pen and paper more often than I take the laptop to the field because it's just more social. You know, you want to be there. You're measuring an under-14B team. You're standing next to the sideline because there is no pavilion. But luckily, you can take this piece of paper on a clipboard and still capture all the data you need to generate really accurate statistics. So the lightweight part of data analysis and, and, and using it as opposed to video analysis is a game changer for me. <clears throat> and uh, I'd, I'd urge anyone to use more of it. And then the creative inquisition of data analysis, you can really measure anything. Um, like I said, sometimes I measure just how many people attend a breakdown, how many people are lying on the ground, and how many people are standing up. I often measure during training sessions um, the exact amount of minutes and seconds the coach talks for as opposed to players doing stuff so that you can see is there enough transfer, is there enough muscle memory work being done during training. Um, you could look at the amount of animation your players use 
um, on the field. So for example, a lot of our wingers are trained that if a move goes to the right hand side and it's not coming to their side, they should animate and pretend that it's coming to their side and kind of play with their wing and I can measure whether they do that or not. So, uh, you know, data can, can look at anything, you can capture anything and you can quantify and build kind of long-term trends and data around anything. So that's the power of that. And then there's also just the difference between development analysis and performance analysis. Performance analysis, I'll just run straight into it. Performance analysis obviously looked at an action that already happened. So you are studying your performance. It's not more complicating than that. The game is in play and you're looking at how you perform during the game. And the, the, the main reason why we look at performance analysis, yes, we want to find ways of, of performing better, but it's actually to influence how you should go and train. Are you going to fix mistakes? Are there new plays that were successful during this game that we should replicate and try more often or at different times of the field or using different players? So it's a very narrow focus. We're looking at a game that's already been played. We want to see what we do and what we didn't do. Were we successful? Did we pull off certain things that we practiced? And then it also shows us what to go and do the next week. And then development analysis is a bit more player-centered. So I want to be looking at, is my 13, 14, and 15 getting in the game a lot? I'm going to work out the type of analysis that can look specifically at that. And the goal then of development analysis is improvement. It's not to go and perform. It's improvement of little pieces of the puzzle that make up this glorious game of rugby union. And then obviously development analysis focuses more on what happens before and what happens after a game. So even though in this course we will be dealing with development analysis and performance analysis by looking at certain games, which would suggest it's only performance analysis. I'm going to show you how you can bake in certain development modes inside of that performance analysis. All right, so that is it as an introduction of the differences between these four things. Like I said at the start, they all overlap. It's a little bit confusing at this stage, but you should essentially do both. But if you had to choose and you don't have a lot of money, you have more time than money and you want things to be lightweight because of the environment where you play and the type of stadiums where your games will play, I'd suggest you focus on data analysis and I'm going to show you in this course how to build awesome tools and how to really use this to the benefit of your team. So now to come back to the match report that I sent you guys and for those who haven't downloaded it, it's just underneath here in the course itself. You can download it and you can just open it on your own screen so you kind of know what we're talking about. All right, so most of these things, stuff that you'll see on TV, territory one, possession, um, you're going to see line out accuracy, scrum accuracy, all these things are obviously performance analysis metrics stuff that showed how we performed. But a lot of it is fairly pointless. So a territory one statistic over time, over a season, would be relevant because you can say, right, why are we always below 50%? So is it something in how I select my team? Is it my team not being able to kick? Do we make too much play in our own half? Why after nine games are we still sitting on 48%? when we should be closer to 60. So only over time is a territory statistic relevant at all. If you see at half time when Australia plays New Zealand, a territory statistic, eat your chips, have a sip of beer because it means nothing. And if the analyst on TV is sprouting on about, yeah, but they only played with so much territory and that's why they are ahead of the scoreboard, throw a milkshake at the TV because it's absolute rubbish. Territory, as you'll see during the course, is only relevant if you break it down into the zones of the field where play actually occurs. Then you break it further down into where you attacked and where you defend. And then we can even take it further by saying, what do we attack off? In other words, if we're in their 50, do we get a scrum platform or a line-out platform or did we win a turnover? What were the platforms given to us to attack from? So only in the context of all of this 
this territory actually makes sense. All right, so you have to break it down like that to understand the territory alone, that, that percentage means nothing. Similarly with possession, we get two types of possession. We get ball possession and we get set piece possession. Ball possession being how much time you pass versus how many times they pass, which again means absolutely nothing. It does not illustrate anything about how a player plays. We can go down here and see how much percentage of the ball 18 passes versus how many times they carry a ball versus how many times they kick it. But measuring how many times one team handled the ball versus the other one means absolutely deadly squat, guys. So please don't look at a possession stat and think it means anything. If you have possession, so say team A has a really good line out and they have a lot of line out possession in the opposition 50 or the opposition 22. Now there is a metric that we can work with. If a team has a weak scrum, but due to an opposition poor handling, they get a lot of scrums in the opposition 22, but they can't really scrum or they can't really score off that platform, means nothing. All right, so please start kind of training your minds to to forget about this territory and possession statistic and always break it down into various zones and the platforms from which we get to attack. So while I'm talking about platforms, we're going to go to attack and defense over here. An attack platform, according to this form that I made, is any scrum, line out, restart, penalty or turnover. So an opportunity from a set play, a platform where you can attack. Um, I actually now move a little bit further. A lot of the times when I measure that I measure where an attack starts from. So uh, uh, fielding an opposition kick and then attacking from there is an attacking opportunity, but it might not be a platform like this one would be. Um, it's a bit easier to measure a platform because you can see when a scrum happens um, or a line out happens or a penalty. There's usually a pause in between when it happens and when the players start playing. Whereas if you want to measure from turnover ball or from opposition kicks or opposition handling errors where the ref plays advantage, it's a bit more difficult to capture those even though you can do it with data analysis as well. So defense platforms is just the op opponent getting attack platforms and that way we can understand how many opportunities they had and how many opportunities we had from set platforms. All right, so now you can see the picture if you divvy up the attack platforms into the different zones, then suddenly it's starting to, to color in the picture and we're starting to see a metric that we can really work with to understand how teams play. These are all still performance analysis, line out accuracy, scrum accuracy, restart accuracy, the amount of penalties we won, turnovers we won. They are not really relevant in the sense of a long-term trend. If over time you win more penalties than your opponent, yes, that's something you can study. But in a game, again, let's rather focus in and see where did we lose those penalties. And then you can look a little bit deeper and say from what kind of play, was it a breakdown penalty, was it a discipline issue with tackling too high, etc., cetera, et cetera. But do not just see a percentage statistic on a performance analysis sheet and I think it means something because those stuff are only relevant over time, even though the TV feeds us this stuff and makes us think it's relevant in any way, shape or form. Okay, but just now on this match report, what I wanted to show you guys was a development metric or development analysis baked into a performance analysis sheet. And here we have it over here. We can see how we use the ball. So we had 95 times to play with it. We passed 59% of it, carried that much, kicked that much, and we made that much errors. So that is how we play, how we decided to play in that day. And here when we talk about development, we can now relate this statistic to how many points we made every time we had a platform. So regardless of how strong the opponent were, we can see this is the amount of opportunities we were given from platforms and this is the amount of times we scored and this is how we played to get there. So if 
your feedback is 0 0.64 and your season average is 1 so you played a little bit crappy you can look all right do we tweak here or is it a variation issue on attack that made us not score enough points so we're not talking about the fence now the conceded but we're talking about the score but if I carry only 26% and I carry a little bit more the next game will the score be altered if I kick up to about 20% which is what the Crusaders usually do how is it going to influence this if I make less errors obviously the errors is an obvious point to change so now you can see why it's called a development metric or development analysis because if we tweak this we can develop our team in a different way and achieve essentially a different result there all right similarly with attack variation i baked into this form wide plays which is a plane to the tram line we'll deal with that in module two uh, line out malls and a kick to regather the ball as attack variations you also get ones like um, direction changes for example um, I see a lot of playoff 9, playoff 10 being used as, as variation metrics. You can even measure how many times your forwards handle the ball versus how many times your backs handle the ball. And I can tell you right now, it's quite scary. The backs are standing out there doing nothing. It's only 9 and 10 that play, and rugby union is kind of... It's actually already rugby league because we don't use the four guys at schools rugby or the three guys in the back. But not to, be, um, not to get sidetracked, an attack variation metric is is another development one because we can build on it uh, even at half time we can say right we've got four wide plays uh, let's push it to to 10. Um, i've worked with a team uh, who only reached about 4.5 in fact it was the average at under 14 level that year out of about 150 teams i measured they only passed the ball 4.5 something percent to their wings with every wing then sharing two point something balls between them per game which makes you ask why the parents still let them play it but anyway if you look at wide plays and i say to a coach right let's push this up to 20 or to 25 um, what skill level do we have to develop during the week or in fact over the year to achieve that remember now all of a sudden it's not just your your 9 10 and 12 that handle the ball as as what happens at about 80% of the time backlines play, your wings now have to come into play with every single move you make. Um, your flankers have to run a totally different arch to get to the next breakdown, etc., etc. So it changes, it develops the skill set of almost all the players on the park just because you decided to put and measure in a development metric like a wide play. All right, so these things can make you think a little bit differently how you train, a little bit differently how you play. Um, lastly, just so I don't skip it, phases per platform, it is another performance analytical uh, kind of approach. We look at how many phases we set up per play and we kind of correlate it with how many points you make per platform. So if you're a team that like to strike off first phase, you want this to be low and you want this to be high. And that shows you that whatever you're doing works. Whereas if you're a team that likes to play with a bit more momentum, wear down the defense, you want to get the phases per platform up while this still stays up to, to show you that your strategy is working. All right, so underneath here, there's now going to be a questionnaire where I just want to sense how far you guys are down the track, how you understand these concepts and uh, basically what's your relationship with analysis at this stage. I want you to use the exercise to really engage the topic and find out more about yourself. Um, not, it's not to show me what you know or show anyone else what you know, it's just to see how do you think moving forward you're going to use data and engage data to improve your own team. All right, so take your time over it. I'm giving you the whole weekend. It only has to be submitted by Monday because on Wednesday, I want to start moving towards us um, learning the analysis system we're going to use to, to score games on the weekend. All right, so thank you very much, guys. It's been a fun module one. Please complete this worksheet, and that's us done for now. Thank you.